and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews. I am your host, Norman Santo. Joining me today is Silver Quill. Oh, Norman, no one can introduce a podcast quite like you. Oh, you're too kind, my friend. You're too kind. And in today's review, we are going to do Season 7, Episode 7, Parental Glidance. In this episode, Rainbow Dash's parents discover she's a Wonderbolt and start showing up at every event to cheer her on. However, their unbridled enthusiasm embarrasses Rainbow Dash and pushes her to the brink. So, before we start our review, we'll go into first impressions. And Silver, what do you have to think about it? Well, we've almost completed the set with this year episode. We've almost met every single parent for the main six. All that remains is Applejack's parents, and we'll get to that. Oh, but these two are so much fun. Uh, just to see these thoroughly embarrassing yet wonderful parents is just a uh, wonderful treat. Windy Whistles and Bo Hot Hoof. Uh, they're just delightful characters. They are a little bit insane, but endearing. At the same time, this episode tries to say that Rainbow Dash was in the wrong in a lot of events, and I'm just not feeling it. If anything, I feel like her reactions were justified, and that maybe Scootaloo's hero worship goes a little too far. But we'll get into that with the details. All right, all right. And, well, as for me, this episode was pretty fun. I do like the expression of the characters and the interactions. The interactions in this episode were good. And I do like to see Rainbow suffer a bit once in a while. And in this situation here, the embarrassment is gold. <laughs> uh, but yes, um, we'll continue on in the review. And talking about reviews, if you guys have not watched the episode yet, please pause here and go watch it because it's a really fun episode. And we'll wait for you. Welcome back. Anyway, Silver, please take the lead. So this episode starts with a simple theme. Common sense and natural selection are dead. Because Scootaloo is just going to rocket on up to Cloudsdale. Because riding in a balloon is practical, but not very fast. No, our little adrenaline junkie of the CMC can and must do the most extreme way. Well, the extreme way is always the best way. That's why we get extreme sports. Yay. And I do want to bring up uh, a point that Josh Scorcher made in his uh, presentations, Friendship is Magic the Gathering. He talked a lot about character goals and the methodology they use. He mentioned that Scootaloo was the biggest victim of Crusaders of the Lost Mark. He said that her original goal always seemed to be to emulate Rainbow Dash, to be as athletic, as fast, as extreme as her idol. And so the change to suddenly guiding others to become more of themselves or to understand their cutie marks, it felt shoehorned in or that they were basically overriding her character. I'm glad for scenes like this because it shows that while she's still helping others understand themselves or working to create cutie mark uh, memories with others, she still is an extreme sports junkie. She still will do the biggest attempts just to get something done. Although character shields seem to be in full effect since she doesn't get her head mode off. It's funny, really. Why is there a lawnmower in the clouds? Like, why do you mow your cloud? Doesn't make sense. And what are the odds of Scootaloo crashing into Rainbow Dash's parents' house? Like, the odds are about a million to one. It's funny, I've heard so many different design critiques of the parents. Bo Hothoof, he seems to get, uh, he seems to get by pretty well. But Windy Whistles, I don't know what people were expecting. Maybe something even closer to Rainbow Dash, despite her uh, coat. I mean, I love that Rainbow got her mother's coat and her father's mane. But some people think that Windy looks a little too plain. Others think she looks lovely. I think she, well, she looks like a pony. I mean, I can't say any of the parents have been super extreme, extra rare character types. They look like they're a part of this world, as does their uh, Cloudsdale neighborhood. And I can kind of empathize with Rainbow's parents as they deal with this squeeing uh, Scootaloo. Uh, at one convention, a young lady came up to introduce herself and instantly burst into tears. She was so eager to say hello to me. And I was looking at her like, what do I do? I just, I, I don't know what to do in these situations. Thankfully, I had uh, much more experienced social people just whisper, hug her. And, you know, it all turned out well. Yeah, I remember the story. 
But still, um, you live and learn, and I'm glad that you're learning step by step, Silver. And as for Rainbow Dash's parents and their design, I don't have any problems with them. They look good, and I do like how they use new assets, especially with Rainbow Dash's dad. Um, you don't see those kind of stallions much in the show that are Pegasi, so that's cool. And her mom, Wendy Whistler, she looks good too, a bit similar to Rainbow Dash, but hey, it's her mom, I can forgive that. Anyway, after a brief introduction, Scootaloo says that she's doing a book report on Rainbow Dash and she's her number one fan, and apparently uh, she's not the only one. It seems that Rainbow Dash's parents are also fans too. So yay, what could go wrong? Anywho, after that, we go inside Rainbow Dash's home. And I will say, uh, we get a super amount of adorable looking at Rainbow Dash's history as a baby. The buck tooth is a special interest, but <laughs> well, that she was a flyer before she even knew it. And poor Wendy, she just getting all tied up trying to keep tabs on her little girl. Also, it's kind of interesting. Rainbow does strike me as the only child type, although as the younger of two, I, I can say with certainty what a normal uh, only child really is. But, you know, kind of used to all attention on me is what I expect. Well, we do get the me, 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 but not in the way we expected. But as we carry on, uh, we go into Rainbow Dash's room. It's your typical um, room. You have a bed, you have a carpet, you have posters. I mean, there's nothing wrong or overly special about it until you discover the hidden room. And of course, Scootaloo's boogly eyes. That is shock and awe right there, personified. You'll be shock and awe too, Silver, if you got a chance to see your idol's trophy room or whatever collection he or she has. You'll be in shock and awe too, my friend. But anyway, we get a grand tour of Rainbow Dash's achievements in her life, or young life, from her first walk to her first tooth. And yeah, uh, this is pretty interesting, and pretty dedicated parents to collect all of this. Pretty interesting, pretty interesting. And when Scooter asks where's the Wonder Bolts, uh, their parents were first confused about, um, is it Rainbow Dash's collection of Wonderbolts memorabilia, and Skitaloo says no, um, her time as a Wonderbolt, and this was a big shock to Rainbow Dash's parents. Although the introduction that Skitaloo is the one to unveil that she that Rainbow is a full fledged Wonderbolt, is that you're thinking what? You're talking crazy talk. Why are you so crazy? You ain't that crazy, homeboy. You ain't that crazy, yo. But here's the thing that gets me: when the parents start coming up and embarrassing Rainbow Dash, okay. Everybody, no matter how old they get, feels just a little bit embarrassed when their parents start heaping on the praise. We all want to pretend that we're older and independent and free of our childish ways, and our parents want to pretend that things are the way they were. I can buy into that. But then at the Wonderbolts performance, where they are uh, basically launching fireworks and putting everyone in danger, I mean, it's not just loud and disruptive. It is physically dangerous. They're lucky they didn't get kicked out or arrested. I blame the main character, S.H.I.E.L.D. Still, it is so nice to see Rainbow working with the team, not screwing up, and she has taken the training to heart and is now part of the team. So this is a good compliment to Newbie Dash, which made people so upset. And it helps that we have Scootaloo providing the entire biography of Rainbow Dash to her parents with plenty of continuity. Although, how much do you want to bet that... Uh, Windy Whistles and Bo Hothoff put out a hit on Windrider after they learned that he tried to torpedo their daughter's career. I mean, once you start launching fireworks at your daughter and her teammates in a, mo in a show, uh, the kid gloves are off. They're going to take him down. I'm sure Rainbow Dash's parents are not that violent. Come on. They're enthusiastic, but they're not that violent. Come on. I'm sure they're nice. Ponies. Yes. But anywho, after the show, we get to see Rainbow Dash do other wonderful things like um, signings, um, photo shoots, and yeah, um, they're really embarrassing. Like Rainbow Dash parents are 
slightly over the top. Over, over the top. I'm impressed with Rainbow for making it all the way to the end of the day to the infamous shower room, which provides plenty of non-family appropriate humor. I mean, first it was co-ed, and now suddenly Thunder Lane is a wonderbolt. He's in the full uniform. But what can this mean? Is he is he staying full time? Is he just filling in for one show? Or does Ponyville now get to claim two Wonderbolts to their name, which is pretty impressive for a town primarily built by Earth Ponies? I mean, it may be a town where Earth Ponies, Unicorns, and Pegasi live together, but it's the furthest place you'd expect two star athletes to appear. Well, if you think about the accidental rate or threat rate in Ponyville, I'm just saying that Thunder Lane earned his spot through hard work and dedication. And with the monster attack on a weekly basis, yeah, he really deserves it. But anyway, Rainbow finally snaps, and in truth, it's long overdue. These two needed uh, a reality check. And yeah, I feel like Rainbow is justified in, uh, in harshing on them. That may be true, but it's still not nice to shout at your parents after what they've done for you. This is where I feel that the episode is a bit divisive. It starts out with the parents being a bit overzealous, a bit too excited. And that causes problems, not only for Rainbow Dash, but the general public. Like you mentioned before, Silver, with the fireworks and whatnot. So you're meant to root for Rainbow to find a solution where they could compromise. They could come to an agreement where, hey, parents you should probably tone it down to a 5 or maybe a 2. But but when Rainbow snaps, your perception of where the story is going is flip turned upside down. So instead of rooting for Rainbow, you're feeling bad for the parents now. And what makes it more heart-wrenching is when Scootaloo denounced Rainbow Dash as her favorite pony. So to me, this part here... Or oh, this turn here was kind of out of nowhere. Eh, well, at least those my thoughts. Though it is kind of funny. They praised her for every little accomplishment, every little thing she does. And now here's Rainbow Dash, often overflowing with confidence. And maybe it was too much of a good thing. But oh, the tragedy now. Scootaloo is heartbroken at her mentor, just so angry at her. How dare you actually talk back to your parents? Although, really, this just raises more question about Scootaloo's parents. She feels like she doesn't get any praise or support, and she's envious of what Rainbow had. <laughs> what are her parents doing? I will not accept the orphan Scootaloo joke until uh, we get a little confirmation one way or another. Although, I don't know who's got the better weepy face, Scootaloo or Rainbow Dash. Silver, so let's just call it a tie, because ponies with sad faces is sad. But anyway, after that incident... Rainbow Dash chases down Scootaloo to explain why she is a bit embarrassed and why she feels the way she feels. And yeah, we get a bit of history. Oh, the hidden history of Rainbow Dash and the other Wonderbolts. Slowly working her way up the ranks, outperforming everyone, including Lightning Dust. It is kind of funny that Spitfire at one point was uh, beneath Fleetfoot. Soren, meanwhile, he... Even when he got bumped down a pace, he didn't seem upset. It's such an optimistic guy. Oh, the tragedy that is Derpy. To see her move from the top of the pack down as her eyes just go more crossed. And then, when we learn where the apple lies, apparently she tried to have a corrective surgery. And all I can say is she, I hope she got loaded from a malpractice lawsuit because it didn't quite work out. Well, I think my friend Pony did pretty well for herself. She's kind of popular nowadays. And I I think the only reason why she keeps her eyes that way is because I think whenever they're focused properly, she emits an optic blast. So that can't be good for Ponyville, no. And well, after the history lesson, Rainbow Dash asks, who would want uh, what I have? And it's good to admit that, hey, I want that because parents support. I don't have it. Yeah. So, after realizing this, Rainbow Dash comes up with a plan, and she needs Scootaloo's help, and Scootaloo agrees. And 
in the next scene later, we get to see Bo Hothoof and Windy Whistler get blindfolded by Scootaloo and be brought to some place. Well, honestly, we know where she brought them, uh, which is the Wonderbolts training ground, but Bo Hothoof and Windy, they don't, which is scary, but they trust Scootaloo, so that's good enough. And with that, Rainbow Dash swoops in and tells them that she's sorry and performs a show for them. A private showing of the Wonderbolts. Yay. And with the uh, solo performance or, you know, the private performance for Rainbow's parents, it's really nice to see the Wonderbolts being nice. Let's face it, throughout this show, they've kind of been less than likable. Soren is the exception. But here they are just being being kind doing a private show for a teammate, acting like a team, much more positive, much more enjoyable than some of their other presentations. Yeah, it's finally nice to get a positive showing of the Wonderbolts after they're blended in past episodes. So yeah, this is a positive showing. And honestly, I think Spitfire is just loving this, just to see Rainbow Dash get taken down a peg by her own parents. It's solid goal for her. She's just totally enjoying this and with that we head back to Ponyville where Scootaloo gives her report and it's nice to see Cheer Lee have just a little bit of humor in the end that she gets to just uh say oh that's a very nice presentation but you gave me a half rotted sandwich so I'm giving you a B although I gotta call baloney on that as well this young filly catapulted herself up to Cloudsdale for this report. That is going above and beyond. That should be an instant A in my book. I mean, give me a break. Uh, but what can I say? Maybe no filly left behind, I'm sure. Or would it be no foal left behind? Hmm. You can never tell with Equestria. Well, Silver surely wasn't there to witness Scudu catapult herself up to Cloudsdale, so she can't in good conscience give an a without witnessing the event, right? Come on, that would be terrible for a teacher to do. And of course, everyone is adorable in their Scootaloo cheer outfit. And that wonderful look on Scootaloo's face that, oh, I'm getting praised. Senpai noticed me. Yeah, Scootaloo finally gets the praise that she always wanted from Rainbow Dash and her parents. And oh my, the face. Yeah, Silver, the, the face is just too awesome. Uh, finally, we get to see... Scootaloo, happy beyond belief. And with that, episode ends. So, let's hit to final thoughts. And Silver, what do you think of said episode? This episode was a lot of fun. Although I feel that Rainbow was more justified in her outburst than the episode wants us to think, I was glad for everyone getting to show their best. Scootaloo shows her best as Rainbow's fan, but also in a way her conscience. Rainbow's parents show their best as loving parents, but also overly enthusiastic parents. Rainbow's sympathetic, but she's also... Well, I still stand by that she's not doing things the wrong way. I maintain that she was justified, but she does show that she loves her parents and is willing to dial it back as well, to meet them halfway. And of all things, the Wonderbolts are likable, and it's been a while since I can say that. Newbie Dash... They had sort of a turnaround near the end, but for a good part, they were heckling. They were borderline unlikable. Except for Soren, I will always have a soft spot for that guy. The nicest guy in the Wonderbolts, and apparently the nicest Colt. Rainbow and Soren, I ship it. Fluttershy and Soren, I ship it. Soren and Soren, I'm working on the cloning technology. <laughs> I think the mirror pool could solve that problem for you, Silver. But anyway, um, as for what I think of this episode... I personally like it. It's a very fun episode. The ponies were expressive. The humor was okay. The situation that Rainbow was in was hilarious. And like I mentioned before, the Wonderbolts, even though they were shown in a positive light, you can see most of them were just enjoying or relishing in the torment that was happening to Rainbow. You, you can see the glee in their faces. Especially when Fleetfoot salute Rainbow Dash's dad. Like, that push... She didn't really had to do it, but she just did it just out of spite. <laughs> uh, there was... That, I enjoyed that. 
But my problem with this episode specifically is the lesson. It started out with too much enthusiasm is not good. So how do you tone it down? Normally you have the lead talk the parents down, make them understand. But nah, you get Rainbow Dash shout at them and make them feel bad. Okay, that's one way to solve one problem, but that's not the proper way. And Scootaloo by this point tells Rainbow Dash that they ain't cool, yo. What you did, that was really hurtful and made your parents feel sad. And that made Rainbow Dash feel bad. And in the end, how are we supposed to interpret the message or the lesson here? Because so in the end, episode was okay, but the lesson was all over the place. It's not a very clean and but still it was very enjoyable that i do give anyway that's it for this week's review but next week we're going to review the my little pony friends forever issue 35 starring twilight sparkle and starlight glimmer anyway if you'd like to support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash the mbs show with every support You'll get full access to deleted content and also exclusive content. And also early access to the review and discussion podcast. And a big thank you from me. And talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Lurker Cat, Twilight Genesis, Androgatorius, Starstree, Master of Leg, and also Jeffrey. Thank you all for the awesome, awesome support. And anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. And I am the Silver Quill. And we'll guys see you next week with another amazing episode of the MBS show. See ya. Adios. Adios.